Well, as the country is remembering the life of Chris Hani, 30 years since the South African Communist Party leader was gunned down, uh, we now speak to one of the people closest to him, MK Commander and Hani's former bodyguard, Pumlani Kubekele. Thank you so much um, for joining us, um, Pumlani. What, you know, memories does this day bring back to you? Well, thank you. You know, this day brings back very sad memories indeed. Sad memories in that what Mama Dimpo, as I was listening, you know, to her speech, what she was saying is very true. So from my side, what I can say is that the African National Congress failed Krisani. The African National Congress failed Chris and his family because the security of Chris Sani, they never took care of the security of Chris Sani from that time when he was still alive. So now, you know, we are just trying to put up something as SACP is saying, you know, they are just trying to, to, to get to the roots of what really happened here. But my take is that, firstly, we must knock at the door of the African National Congress. The African National Congress owes the people of South Africa, you know, an apology to say we never took care of the security of Chris Hani, you know. So now it brings back those sad memories that had that thing not happened, and, you know, it would, Chris and he would still be with us today. So my, what, what I'm saying is that the African National Congress has to, to, to say something. For instance, if you listen to Vusi Tebeguayo, you know, one of the eloquent speakers who always talks about the situation in South Africa, the ANC... The SACP, they toy toy against the very same government that they are in charge of, of you know. So it's a competition of toy toys, you know. And that time must pass. We have to get someone to account, you know. And the first person to account is the African National Congress. Now, of course, let's go back to that day in 1993. Uh, you knew Chris Harney not just as a leader, but also, you know, someone whose safety you were once charged with. How do you feel, you know, or how did you feel, rather, back then when you heard that day that he was, he was shot dead? Yes. Hey, you know, it was a very sad day. I was in Port Elizabeth that time attending a wedding of a, a, a family member, a relative. And uh, I was no longer his bodyguard, as you were. Yes, I'm sorry for that. I was no longer his bodyguard, as you were correctly saying. Now, when this thing struck, I heard on Capital Radio that Chris Hani has been killed. You know, it was... I, I was broken inside. I thought about Medim Po. I thought about the young kids, Onoma Kwezi, Olindi, Oneo, you know, and I, I thought, really, how would they be feeling now, you know? And, you know, I blamed myself, you know, but I, I had to leave Chris Ani because. Just before that thing happened, a year before, I had been shot at in Soweto while I was still his bodyguard, and I had to be moved back to Transkai. So, you know, it was said. In fact, we knew that that day would be coming, you know, where Chris and he would be attacked, because there has been many attempts on his life, even inside the country here. Yeah, in East London, they nearly got to him, you know. Had it not been for the, 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 the 
some of our comrades, like Roni, who was there at East London, uh, Ben Skuman Airport, and the guys from the military intelligence, Transkai military intelligence, you know, whom I had alerted that Chris Ali was coming that side. But they, the ANC did not give, did not book a ticket, a plane ticket for me, because they said, why is Chris Hani always traveling with someone? I said, I'm his bodyguard. And they said, no, no ways. We are not, he must travel alone like other leaders. Perhaps I'm just saying, Chris Hani, this thing is at the door of the ANC. Mm, especially, you know, if you know that there's been so many attempts on his life, that is definitely not the way to go about something like that when someone's life is at risk. Now, you know, I would like to know as well how the media painted, not just the media, but how he was painted as a leader back then in the apartheid, during the apartheid regime, and, and what he was like as, you know, Chris, Chris Hani, the family man, the friend. What were those two um, pictures? How, how, would, how did they look like? You know, for people who did not know Chris Hani, you know, firsthand, I mean, intimately, like as a brother, as a father, as a friend, as a comrade, because that's what he was. He was everything to everybody, very friendly, someone, you know, Chris and me, we shared a bed together at times when we go to the, to the townships. We slept together because there was nowhere else to sleep. And Chris Hani was not a person of sleeping in hotels, and all those, you know, other places like those. So Chris Hani was a man of the people. He would, we, I remember one time we went to uh, a mine, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure, but where the Mandashe, you know, was there in that mine. And uh, there were shop stewards. We went to there to he was he went to address them, and uh, till the early hours of the morning, he was there singing with them, you know, and uh, doy doing with them. He did that with Sadu, with everyone. Teachers loved him, peasants loved him. He would go to villages and sit down there with tribesmen and you know that's how Chris Ani was and the media on the other side you know they portrayed Chris Ani as one of the hawks of the ANC in the ANC there were doves and hawks you know those who who were portrayed as a, if they were for peace and as if Chris Ani was not for peace he was for uh, 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 not for a uh, uh, negotiated settlement, you know. But, I mean, Chris Hani stated his side clearly, you know, his viewpoint to say, I did not think that it was the right time for the armed struggle to be suspended in South Africa. And I remember that day when the armed struggle was suspended, we were together in Transkai staying at a house of one late uh, comrade Gazi, comrade Gazi in, in Umtata. It's the time when comrade Chris, his indemnity had been taken from him by the regime. So we're staying there. And he only had it for the first time on the news. We were watching television till the early hour of the morning. That's where he learned that the armed struggle has been suspended. His own comrades from the National Executive Committee visited Transkai. They went to... Mm. And... The resort there in Transkai, but they did not go to visit Chris Hani. So, what the media was portraying Chris Hani as, the ANC added salt to that, you know. 
So they gave credence to what the media was saying. I remember, OR, sorry, not O.R. Tambo, uh, Comrade Nelson Mandela, you know, Utatu Nelson Mandela. When Comrade is, uh, when, we, when, when we went back to, to Joburg, to, when his indemnity was reinstated, we went back to Joburg, they said to, we will uh, unfortunately. not... It seems like our connection is getting a little bit weak there, um, but what a great conversation, of course, to have there with former MK commander and uh, a bodyguard to Chris Hani, Pumlani Kube Kile. Uh